Hello, Mr. Mikkel here again. I'd like to talk to you today about different styles of reading, um, and I want to mention to you three particular styles of reading and give you a chance to practice them. Very quickly, let's think about them like this. The first one we've got is skim reading. Skim reading here means to read the whole text very quickly. We're going to look at certain parts of paragraphs like the thesis statement, the topic sentence. We're just reading the overall text very quickly to understand what the topic is. The second type of reading is called scan reading. Now this scan reading is what we do when we're looking for a specific piece of information. For example, someone's name, uh, a date, Maybe there's a question that we have to answer that is directing us towards a specific piece of information. Finally, we have the type of reading that most students do, which is called intensive reading. And this is trying to understand everything within the text. The problem is that students neglect these two and focus on this one too much. So intensive reading is important, especially at academic English level, but we must not neglect those two. So now we're going to go on and have a look at these three types of reading. What is skim reading? Skim reading is noting key nouns and verbs in a text reading, and doing this quickly. Why is skim reading important? Skim reading is an essential skill for good, quick reading and general understanding of a text. Specifically, skim reading helps you understand the, the meaning in a paragraph, it enables you then to write a summary of the paragraph. In terms of IELTS, it is very helpful for doing paragraph matching questions, information matching questions, a person and an idea, and for summary questions, and also global multi-choice questions. For example, here we see that by identifying the keywords in a skim reading, and those keywords being no treatment, slow human aging, diseases older, we can see that the best match is B, and that choice A is clearly too specific. What is scanning? Scanning is looking for one word, or a number, or a name. We do it very fast. In this example, we're looking for the number 1750, and so we see the person reading very quickly. Why do we need scanning? Scanning is really only important in test, in a test situation. In your normal daily reading, we don't scan. But in a test, it's very good because it's going to help us read very quickly. And it's specifically beneficial for short answer or true, false, not given questions. When we see in the question word a specific word that cannot have a synonym. So the first step, of course, is to highlight the word we're looking for in the question. And when we've done that, we want to find the words around the keyword. So in this situation we're looking at the words before and after 1750 and then we also notice that these other words, these other keywords, limit is similar to reduce, food consumption is similar to caloric intake, and daily is the same meaning as a day. So all of these things are the same or synonyms for one another, so the answer is clearly true. What is intensive reading? Intensive reading is slow, reading word by word. This is the tr traditional way of reading. This is what most people think reading is. Why do we use it? Obviously to understand everything in the text clearly. It's a very important and necessary skill at university and in academic reading. One of the problems though is that this type of reading is very slow, so it's not a good, uh, good reading style in a test situation, in an IELTS reading test for example. Another problem is when we see vocab we don't know, we will often stop. This makes our reading not efficient. So closely connected to intensive reading is the idea of guessing new vocab. So in a reading text, why do you need to guess new vocab. Why do you need to be good at guessing techniques? Because you don't know all the vocab. As a non-native speaker, there's no way that you're going to know all the vocab. You, to prepare for the IELTS test, for example, or any kind of reading test, it is incredibly inefficient and, in fact, impossible to try and learn every single vocab uh, chunk or unit. 
So instead of that, we're going to use guessing strategies. When there's a word we don't know, we can definitely guess. Even if you don't know the word consum consumption, by continuing re reading, you see a connection at the end to the word diet or nutrition. Now hopefully you know one of those two words, and you know they're related to food, so we can guess that this word consumption is something to do with eating, something to do with food. So we're using context to guess. We can also, if we know the word consume, we can use our word form to see a similarity between this word consume and consumption. Ignoring words. So a big part of guessing, the guessing technique, is simply to just ignore words. Some kinds of words, particularly adverbs and some adjectives, we really don't need to, to know them. So you need to think, do I really need to know this word? For example, in the text here, we have this adjective broad, a broad range. Do you need to understand the word broad? No. Take it away and the sentence still makes sense. Another good technique is to use your grammar knowledge, use your word form knowledge, think about other kinds of word forms that might be similar to the word you're looking at. You, for example, if you're familiar with parallel structure in this sentence here, you see increasing longevity and prolonging good health. So we see that we've got the verb and then a noun and a verb and a noun. So those two verbs increasing and prolonging are very similar. You probably didn't know the word prolonging, but we see this word increasing and we can make a good guess and an accurate guess that they have this a very similar meaning or extending or making longer. Now we see this word longevity and prolonging. We can also use the word form there to notice that we've got this part of the word long and both those words longevity and prolonging, this base word long. Again, we can also use the context. We know that the context in this situation is aging and time. So we can use the context and our grammar knowledge to make the connection that prolonging connects to increasing. Guessing is a matter of a combination of things. Sometimes you're going to ignore the words. Sometimes you can use your grammar knowledge or your word form knowledge. But the best thing of all is the context. Look at the words before and after the word you're confused about.